As a reaction proceeds, the reactants decrease in concentration and the products increase. Represent what I've just said in this graph. Pause the video until you've done it. Remember that the gradient of the graph you're drawing is representative of the reaction rate because it shows change in product concentration per time, which is what reaction rate is. At the start of the reaction, we don't have many products. Remember that in a reaction we start with reactants and they change into products. And we are speaking here about an irreversible reaction, reaction which only proceeds to the right. The reactants change into products, the products don't change into reactants. That's what we're focusing on right now. In the section on equilibrium, we focus on reversible reactions. Right, so we start off with a lot of reactants, but not many products, low products product concentration. As time passes, of course, the reaction is now happening towards the right. The reactants are changing into product, so you're getting less and less reactants, more and more product as time proceeds. But initially, the rate at which that conversion from reactants to products happens is high. In other words, the gradient is steep, high reaction rate. Why? Because you have a lot of reactants and so there are a lot of them to meet one another while they're colliding and so stay together as products. But as time proceeds, then, you know, that gets sort of diluted by the presence of many products because many of the reactants have already changed into products. And so now when the particles collide, a lot of the reactants bump into products rather than other reactants and they can't react with the products. And so reaction rate D decreases, decreased reaction rate until the reaction rate becomes zero. In other words, the amount of product doesn't change over time, nor does the amount of reactants, because they stop reacting. 